it for thy courts above. Back over six pages to hymn number 340. They're all right here in this group. Salvation and Redemption. 340, Jesus Saves. those songs so far? They're telling us exactly what the story of Jesus and what he did for us is all about. He gave his life for us. Now we're going to really sing a song and we're going to really tell him about how much we love him. One page, 341. To God be the glory and let each one of us stand together and sing. To God be the glory. Praise the Lord. Let the peace. 
so gratifying to stand up here and see everybody singing. I mean, I don't think there was one person that I looked at them and they weren't singing. Praise God. Let us be seated. We have a special Sabbath school this morning. Good morning, church. Good morning, morning, Sabbath school. The word of the Lord says, I will offer unto thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Amen? That's like he said. It's offerings of thanksgiving from from the Lord, and we come here to call upon his name. So my name is Michael Bolin. I'll be your Sabbath school superintendent for the month of uh, November, and uh, so happy to to be in this position again, and it's so happy to see you come early. I know it was mentioned last night about coming early to meet the Lord, and I think when you come early, it's a, truly a blessing. Uh, matter of fact, this morning was a little special because some of the gates wasn't open, and Auntie Carmen says, has opened the gate for us, she says, opening up the pearly gates. I like that, and that's what we do. We come to the house of the Lord. We have to look beyond what we see here. But we need to put our focus up where God is at. And that's why we, we're so thankful. We got Brother Darren uh, Whitman here with us for the, for the week. And he's giving these uh, uh, sanctuary studies. Uh, that's a blessing. It's a double blessing. And it goes along with our Sabbath school lesson. So let's be faithful. He'll be uh, meeting uh, today at, at uh, 11 o'clock service and tonight at 7. So let's support him. So a special welcome to our visitors. I see we have a lot of visitors in the corner over here. And where are you from? The Wet Church? Okay, we're glad to have you. You got a whole section there for us. So glad to have you this Sabbath. And also, do we have any other visitors here for the first time? Okay. All right. So at this time, I think... uh, we have our scripture and prayer by Brother Dave. Good morning, happy Sabbath. Uh, uh, the scripture reading today is going to be in uh, uh, Romans uh, chapter 8, uh, verses uh, 1 through 4. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit so, the, uh, pray now um, Father God thank you for giving us this opportunity to uh, come to your house and uh, worship you and, and thank you for uh, sending your son to die for us so that we could have the you know uh, uh, redemption through him. I pray, pray for all the people who uh, who weren't able to make it uh, uh, today because they're uh, sick, and I just uh, pray you wash over the uh, service today that the uh, people who come here would be blessed. Uh, in Jesus' name, Amen. Before we have our special uh, presentation, I want to take a few minutes to share a few things uh, concerning this word opportunity. You know, it's a powerful word that I I believe it's sometimes neglected and even misunderstood. Even uh, last night when we went to the presentation, that's an opportunity. It's a choice. You can 
come and 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 the Lord don't force, but He wants us to come to to see what He has in, uh, for us. Because one thing about opportunity, if it's not uh, uh, if it's a missed opportunity, it could be what? If you miss something, what happens? It could be gone, and sometime forever. It's a, you know, God is good, but He allows opportunities to come so we can benefit from them. Uh, I even added the word precious opportunities because God is concerned about every situation that comes into our path, okay? Working out all things uh, for our good and for his glory. So you got to look at that word opportunity is, is because God is in the midst of all these things. And I, I want to ask you a few things. What's your attitude uh, when someone asks you for help? Do you see it always as opportunity? It should be. But those things come all the time. Those are the things that we uh, somewhat are, we deal with from time to time. What about if someone come and ask you uh, for something without notice, unexpected? You know, like this morning we had to do a few things, and and you know, I got something else to do. Or do you see that as an opportunity? Amen. I'm trying to draw you out here. What about giving uh, financially? If if you got a crisis going on. And as someone that says, hey, I, I, we need support. We need some money to, for this uh, uh, problem. Do you see it as opportunity? Yes. You should. What about someone who's ill? Should be an opportunity there. Whenever you have an opportunity to help someone or yourself, always, and I say this twice, always welcome it and embrace it because it's a blessing from God. And I want to tell you why in James uh, 1, 7. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Okay? So again, only thing God sends down from above is good. Now, sometimes it may come where uh, we may not understand it, but it's always good. And even God can bring good out of something that's not good. Webster Dictionary says, opportunity, now let's listen to this now, I like this. It says it's favorable for the execution of a purpose. Ah, it's, so it's favorable. So what's something is favorable? Opportunity, huh? It's good. So everything is, is favorable for the uh, execution of a purpose. So, you, so if the opportunity comes, you have to see it as a purpose. You know, see it more than just, oh, here I can just give, uh, give financially, but it's for a purpose. Okay? So you've got to look beyond that because that's what it says. It's for uh, doing good uh, and having a plan. God had a plan when sin started in heaven. God turned a bad situation, sin, into an opportunity. Which revealed his unchanging love He gave hope, accepted forgiveness, offered salvation, and promised eternal life to sinners through Jesus Christ. God had a plan when sin came. He just didn't didn't just eliminate it right away. He had a plan because that's why we're able to be here today, because of that plan. Let's look at Romans 8, uh, 8, 12. I'm not in the right passage. I'm just going to read. I must have wrote it different. It says, And we know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. So again, if if we're looking at all these things as opportunities, they should all work together for good. Okay? And I think that's what I'm trying to... And this word opportunity has been on my mind for the last few weeks because I'm, I'm going through a little... A challenge at my work, which may affect my situation in a lot of ways. So please keep me in prayer because uh, I have to see it as opportunity and I got to see it. I want to see it as uh, God in the midst of what's going on with my work. Uh, 
One more scripture. I love scriptures here. Uh, Galatians 6.10. I'll just go ahead and read it. It says, as, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good to all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. So as we have opportunity in closing, what we need to do to all men? Come on, Sabbath school. You're too quiet in here. It's making you think. That's what I want you to do. This is all good stuff, you know, because our life is always impacted by opportunities, seen and unseen. So it says we need to do good unto all men, even your enemies. If it's someone that, that may not be right with you, or, uh, then it, it's, it's, it should be an opportunity because God said it's, it's a plan. God is in the midst of that. We may not understand it, but God does. Okay. So in closing with that, I think we'll transition right to our little presentation. I have my wife come up and... Uh, Good morning, church family. Uh, my husband and I have made our plans to go to Kidapawan for our vacation early this year. As we prepare, we receive our urgent emails from our church family there in Kidapawan concerning his daughter. Uh, this was an urgent request by my husband and because uh, uh, Mr. Um, Arnold Arakusaba, he has a problem to his daughter about the uh, heart problem. And he is also a teacher, but the, the money that the, uh, the salary that he has, he, he cannot afford to make a surgery for the heart uh, problem. At the time, I talked with my husband about it, and then uh, what shall we, uh, what shall we do this so that we could help? That's why we open up and bring the, we bring here in the church for this situation. Okay, amen. Yes, uh, and we'll start our video, video presentation, and uh, just briefly, Arnold Alcasaba is an elder at the local church in Kitapau in the Philippines. And uh, he's a, I'll, I'll read a little what he said. And, and this is what we did. We, he, they brought this to my wife and we took it upon ourselves as an opportunity because as we were planning for our vacation, we felt that God was allowing this to happen. You know, so we, we, you know, we did what we could to, to help in this, uh, with this problem, urgent, as his daughter uh, well, when she was born, she was born with uh, a lot of health problems, um, prone to pneumonia, and had a, a heart disease, but they didn't, wasn't really aware of it until she was at the age of 15. But that's, uh, so her whole life from birth till 15 was just hospital visits and just not a, 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 a lifestyle that we normally would say is nice. So he just appealed, and one of the things he asked, and this was a letter he sent, he sent here to us. Well, you can't see it, but it says uh, uh, appeal, a personal appeal from a father. And it says, uh, my family cannot afford medical operation and me medicines needed. No one expects me to be in this position asking as I'm not used to soliciting or asking. And uh, so his situation just caused him to to do what he had to do to save his daughter's life. So we're going to uh, show this video here. And we're so glad you showed up because this is in the bulletin. I'm glad that we are presenting. Amen. You can call Yeah. 
His name is Mahaki Taka, and uh, he has this tire. He made a tire uh, out to make a chair. To go. Yeah, very now, I want to stop here. Now, we're in the Philippines. We took a, we're visiting some friends, and this is a tire that was made, just made out of a tire. And uh, you see the hole in it? That's for draining or for cleaning it, for the water can drain through. But it's very, it's, I couldn't believe he took a tire that we throw away and they use it for resources. And it's very nice, it's, it's comfortable. And you'll see it's even a table with it. Um, let's see here. Creative. So here in the Philippines, you see they use all the resources to uh, uh, yeah. just a regular tire. I'm going to go out here, and, and you see he has and a, that's a table right here, a regular, regular table, table and out of a tire. Made out of tire, a table, and here's a few more chairs, and they're very yes, comfortable, uh, very trust comfortable. me, trust me, very comfortable, so I just wanted to add this to my video today. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I just want to add, church, it's just, you know, while we're there, a lot of things we take for granted, they use those things. Uh, and it was more things. I didn't, I didn't take a lot of time to, to film some of the things that they, that they take from palm trees. Uh, matter of fact, we had dinner at some friend's home, and they, instead of plates, they had, uh, what was that, leaf or some, a leaf that for the banana. For the, yeah, banana. And it made real nice uh, to eat, you know. <laughs> Save some money, huh? Let me see. Myra. All right. We're arriving uh, to the home of the Cassava family. We're going to the home of the brother Al Cassava. And uh, so it's the first time we're meeting family of Joy. Videoing? Yeah. That's Joy, right? Oh. That's Joy. Joy Alcasaba. Little, little brother. This cute little boy. We're waiting for Mr. Al Kasaba, but he, he'll be coming in in a few minutes. This is John. Right here. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. That's the young lady that with the heart problem. Good to see you from, from San Diego to the Vista 78 Church. Oh, Michael, and this is Myra. Uh, you know, Myra? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. This is my oldest brother. Right here. Yeah. Hi, say hi. Hello. Hi, Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi. You are well now? Yes, I'm okay. How about you? This is Joy. Just relax a little. Would you like to say something to the, because I'm going to be showing this back at the church and meeting you for the first time. God first, amen for that. Yeah. Yeah. First, I thank God, my yeah. parents, and all who helped me. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> all right. My girl, my girl. Okay. It's the mother of mother. joy. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. It's the mother of joy. First time, pa. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 
Mr. Kasaba, this uh, brother of Kasaba, the father of John. Hello, my friend. Yes. Good afternoon. Nice meeting you. Good to see you. <laughs> yes. Come explain, guys. So, the scheduled operation was supposed to be John 4. Okay. However, when the cardiologist examined her in Kinabawan and in Davao, there is already an enlargement of the two arteries that is within her heart in, uh, uh, inside. No? So, because of that, uh, the doctor advised us that she should really be undergoing an immediate operation. Okay. Otherwise, the, the, the two blood vessels will burst and that will now be, we will be losing our daughter. So that is why the advice was immediate operation. Okay. So immediately thereafter, after the examination that was done in Davao City, we immediately uh, talked on the schedule. So instead of June 4, the schedule of the operation was June 9. And so, I uh, no, no, May 9. Okay. So we were in Davao, May 7. We already arrived in Davao, May 7, in the hospital, uh, subject for the operation kagad. Okay, uh, immediately. So because of that, uh, so we we tried to manage everything. Then good enough because the, the doctor called us and uh, they told me that they are available on June 9. So okay. the scheduled operation was in June 9. Uh, May 9. Uh, no, no, May, uh, May 9. Yes. Supposed to be June 4. Right. So okay. That is, the, that is the reason why we there was a drastic change of the schedule. Okay. 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 So thank you very much. Yes, well, thank you for this time. Yes. yes. And, uh, <laughs> and the Chulubis uh, Church is just very supportive with your yes. prayers. Oh. And, and, uh, and the timing was kind of just right for Myra and myself to, oh. to be coming to the Philippines. And yes. so we were able to have this time together and so but, but have you have you seen her the, the one at the back? No 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 I haven't seen her. Oh, okay, okay. So, wish you it. Anyway uh, this is already the you know uh, okay so the recovery it's not the, the this is the actually the laceration the operation. Okay. This this is the the one where the tube was being inserted into. Uh, so this is uh, I guess three point five Inches. Oh, okay. 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 This is so. Uh, actually, the there are some some scars. This is due to the other instruments in the laboratory uh -huh. in the operating room. Okay. So uh, a little bit. There is a quite big uh, operation uh, work yeah. here. Okay. This is where the tube was inserted. Yeah. This is the operation actually. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, that tells us God is good. And, yes, God and, is good all and, the time. And we need to keep praying. So yes, we'll, so. you definitely will be in our prayers. And, yes, thank and, you very and, much. And uh, we'll look forward to a full recovery for her. Actually, 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 the operation supposed to be will last only for three hours. But then uh, the operation started 12:16 and it, it mm. ended up 6:15. Oh, wow. okay. So uh, that is the duration of the operation actually. Mm -hmm. And immediately after operation, in the operating room, she was transferred to the NECO, which is also uh, similar to the ICU, the intensive care unit hospital. Okay. And she stayed there for two nights or 24 hours then. After that, she was transferred to our original room. Okay. okay. All right, well. Okay. Oh, 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 <laughs> okay, okay, I'll stand. Okay, go ahead. Thank you very much. I have received this one from uh, Mr. Michael uh, uh, Bolden and Anging Miraflor. Oh, Bolden. Okay. All right. Thank you very much again to the people who, are, who give the, the amount. Thank you very much. God will bless you more because of your generosity. And thank you even for the prayers you have given to my daughter. And I guess because we believe only in one God and we belong only to one family. So thank you very much for all of these things because this really saved our daughter from uh, uh, being 
from feeling bad sometimes because uh, there is an ailment in your heart. So again, to all brothers and sisters in your church, thank you very much. God bless you more. Okay, thank you. Okay, say something. Okay, I uh, she is already fine now, and the surgery is success. The total amount that we collected, we helped them one thousand fifty, and uh, when we give the money, they're really happy because it is a uh, very big for them, very big for he- to them to to help. And I would like to say thank you for your prayers here in the church. And especially the people that giving financially, it's really give the uh, it's really give uh, help very big help for them. And when we give them the help, they're really happy because they need also for uh, the medicine or they have some uh, um, paying for some uh, need. And they are uh, they're really happy for the church that they are given, and then they are. And Arnold told us, uh, Michael, can you, your last Sabbath, can you talk uh, for our divine service just to say thank you for your church? Uh, and then Michael told, okay, I can do that. And that's why I would like, again, I could say thank you to everyone to, of you, to your support. Thank you. Okay. Give uh, your prayer, give uh, financially and your concern because it comes back that way. God always bless. And it's a, it's, it's a blessing when we could bring something back to the church, uh, when we can see the, uh, the after result. So God is good. At this, at this time, we have a, a special group coming up to give us a song. Uh, and it's Ed and Louisa. Remy, Edna, and my wife, Mary Flora. So come forward. Let us have special music. Good morning, church. I make this um, really short. Um, I heard the Savior say, thy strength indeed is small. Jesus gave it all. He died in Calvary at the cross just for you and me. So as we sing, please listen to the words and uh, keep us in prayer. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus gave it all. He was his white as snow. Lord, now him did I find thy power and thine alone can change the leper's spot and melt the heart of stone. Gave it all, all to him I owe. Sins are left a crimson stain. He washes white as snow. And when before the throne I stand. Oh, down 
of Jesus being. Jesus made all, all to Him I own. Sick and left a crimson stain, He What a wonderful song to close on, huh? Jesus gave it all. Amen. And I'll, again, I want to thank everyone for coming this morning for Sabbath School. And now it's time that we are break for our classes. And what a wonderful lesson. We're talking about purifying. Amen? Amen. Yes. Yeah, so uh, at this time, we have our teachers stand. All the teachers stand. Let us have a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you again for this time that we've had together and with you. Thank you for blessing, Lord, this program and blessing the hearts that came this early this morning to hear from you. So may you continue to fill their hearts, Lord, with with things from above. Bless each class right now, Lord, in a special way. These are real precious studies that we're studying right now in the sanctuary. May we take it to heart. May we learn these wonderful lessons, Lord, uh, for us today. Fill each teacher with your divine Holy Spirit in a special way that they may pour out to the class a way that you might be glorified. glorified. Thank you again for us this time. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Test in. Test out. Test in one, two. Good morning, everyone. Dale, if you can, can you hear me okay? Okay, here's what we need to do. Today is a little different. If you're going to be a part of my class, I need you to move all the way up. Um, we, we're sharing with the Korean group today, and they're going to be in the back. So if you want to be part of the Korean group, you can be there. If you want to be part of this class, I just invite you to move up. If you're not sure, then just stay where you are. <laughs> not, no, not today. <laughs> Yeah, he's fine. Good morning. Can you hear me? Dale, I think up just a notch, but not too much. Hope everybody's doing well. I want to let you know that uh, Halloween came and went on my block very quietly. 
I, I, ver I saw very little people in the streets and, uh, you know, um, at my work, they like to put up scary stuff and I, I think I was the only door that didn't have anything on there. But it's okay. Because I'm not part of that mess. You know? And, and I like what Justin said last time. You know, the world is really a dark place. And... Um, at the time when the world is really dark, isn't it time for your light to not shine? So, you know, especially on a night like Halloween, our light should be even shining more brightly. So, um, there's a lot of things we can do and be creative. Yeah, thank you. Going to go ahead and start with, oh, Pastor Williams is not going to be here today. So he's okay, he's on a, a mini vacation is what he told me. And he won't be here next week either. So it's really not a mini vacation. Um, <laughs> so, so he won't be here next week, and then I won't be here the following week. So we'll be together the last Sabbath of the month. I want to welcome everybody. I see some, I've seen you before, but if you can just... Tell us who you are and where you're visiting from. No, behind you. Uh, can we? And and if we need to get you a mic because of those that's looking. Okay. Paul and Isabel, thank you for being here today. Any special prayer requests? Lillian, um, I, I'm not sure, Dale, it's on, the green light's on, okay, Joy, Margo, Ivan, wait, 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 wait. Ibarra? Ivan. Oh, Ivan. Ivan. Yeah, okay. And um, the woman I just met on the bus that loves the Lord, you know, she never gave her yet, but she was working at Frederick, that's Mary, <laughs> and uh, appreciates our prayer. She asked for prayer, so okay. uh, appreciate I don't know if you guys caught that, what she said. She hasn't been here yet, which means you're working something. Okay. Okay. Hey, brother. My family. Your family. Okay. Uh, ben. Any other prayer requests? Ed? Uh, well, it's four o'clock, but uh, one is in. Well, one, one and a half is in. Um, the other two and a half is out. So if you can continue to pray for our family. Yes. Okay. John, uh, John, John, uh, my sister Olga, and my sister Agnes and her family. Okay. Okay. Da, 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 da. Yes. I just need your prayers for my sister. She needs another surgery, eye surgery. Victoria? Uh, yes. Okay. On December. We don't know the date yet, but she's okay. here. Okay. So I understand my sister here is a, a great sailor. You've been sailing on the ocean? Sophia. Sophia's been sailing, not you. Okay. Gotcha. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that we can come to this place, that we could come knowing that our sins, though they be at scarlet, that you have a way to make them white as snow. Amen. Father, before we proceed, we ask and bring before you our sins, Amen. those we are aware of and those we're not aware of. And we ask, Father, that you would make us 
clean indeed. Thank you for Paul and Isabel and for bringing them safely today. Father, we continue to pray for Joy and Margot, Yvonne, and the lady on the bus. And Father, we pray that you would work whatever needs to be done in each of their lives and, and give patience to those who are working with them as the growth has taken place. Father, we pray for Ben and his family, and you know, Lord, what his concerns are. Uh, give him strength to be the head of that family, and Father, let him hold fast to that which he know is good and true. Father, Ed and his wife has continued to bring um, prayer requests before you, and Lord, we know you're aware. And we pray for Johnny and Olga and Agnes and her family. And Lord, whatever needs to happen, that you would, in some kind of way, open a book or bring back a memory, however it needs to be done, Father. We, we trust and thank you for prayers that will be answered. And Father, uh, continue to remember Victoria as well. Be with us. Be with Pastor Williams as he is on his vacation. And Father, be with us that your Holy Spirit will guide us. Amen. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. Any, any thoughts? We're going through the uh, Sabbath school lesson. And you know, anytime we, we approach a lesson, we always approach with preconceived ideas. How we think it happened, when we think it happened, why. And as we go through the lesson, we find out that things don't always work the way we think it did. Uh, Winston Churchill made a quote and he said that in, in, in our lifetime, all of us will come across truth. He said, but most will get, pick themselves up, brush themselves off, and continue as if nothing ever happened. So I, I trust that as we go through this lesson, that as our minds are open, that we will embrace uh, what we find in the Bible. In the book of Genesis, chapter 16, God, I'm sorry, chapter 15, God is talking to Moses. Abraham. And here's what he said to Abraham. He said unto Abraham, Know for surety that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them, and they shall be afflicted four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward they will come out with great substance. Now, why do you think that's relevant to the lesson we're studying today? Why did God make it a point to tell Abraham that those who are in slavery now, when they come out, when they're free, they will have a great substance? Why is that important to know? Connected to the lesson that we're studying about the temple. I believe the, they needed the great substance because that was necessary for, for, for the furniture and, and all the necessary things for the uh, sanctuary. That's right. That's right. Look in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 25. Exodus 25, verses 8 and 9. Someone read that for me when you get it. According to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. Okay. So the Lord gives some reasons there on why they were to build this sanctuary, that he may dwell among them, that he may dwell among us. So, if he's making it off of the pattern, then, well, let's go back. 
So, so the, the sanctuary here on earth have how many compartments? Okay, let me ask the question again. The sanctuary here on earth has how many compartments? I, okay, I see two fingers. I hear three. I see three in the back. Okay, what are they? Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Go, go, wait. <laughs> the whole and the most whole. Okay, so we know that's inside. Inside. What about the outside? Courtyard. The courtyard, yeah. Yeah. So so then the question we were looking at is does the heavenly sanctuary has a courtyard? No. <laughs> Your thoughts? Okay, I heard, I heard yes and no. Hold on, brother, we'll get you. You have the mic. I, I would say yes. Why? Because uh, uh, there's, uh, well, for, for one thing, uh, when John saw uh, the heaven, there was the outer courtyard, and, and those angels had to stand, stand somewhere. Uh, you know, so Let me ask you this. When John said he saw it, did he describe it, or did he say he saw it? Uh, what? I, I, I left my Bible here for two weeks, so I'm... <laughs> the, are you raising your hand? Okay, there's a... Okay, we have a question. Did you want to say something, Justin? Go ahead. We'll get to you, Paul. Well, I was just going to say, because each time you read in Exodus, where, where uh, Moses is given the instruction to build the uh, certain articles, he said, after the pattern... When he yeah. talks about the altar of sacrifice and the labor, he doesn't say anything about the pattern. And also, as Brother Whitman talked about last night, there was no outer court because there is no death and no suffering in heaven. Yes, that makes sense. Um, in going back, if you read the scripture, it says that he wants a duplication of the sanctuary in heaven uh -huh. to be put here. But you have to ask yourself the question, what is the sanctuary for? Yes. It's not by, well, don't <laughs> misunderstand, but it's not for us to come every day and kill a lamb. Yeah. It's for us to learn something and go away with that in our hearts. Yes. And a lot of people don't seem to understand, but when the new heaven and the new earth comes, there is no sanctuary. Yes. And there is no temple. But the temple is us in the, in the, in, with the character of Christ. Yes. And so we're a living temple. But the actual physical temple that's in heaven is the walls are made by the angels themselves. It's not a physical, it's a living sanctuary. Interesting. Interesting. And, and I hope these conversations will provoke you to go back and read. Read so you can see what it says. Now we know that when Moses went up to the mountain, God didn't not only gave him the Ten Commandments, but he gave him the dimensions for the sanctuary as well. And he came down and he presented to the people. Now, one of the things that I find interesting was among this group of people were, um, that came out of Egypt was a group called the Mixed Multitude. Now, every time there was some rebellion or revolt or dissension going on, it started with that group. They always brought up, we were better off in Egypt. We had food and, and all kinds, and they made it sound good. But they were slaves. It, you can't have a good life if you're a slave. So, I'm sorry? I was under the understanding that the mixed multitude included the Egyptian people that saw the reason why they should follow. I, I, I didn't think those included all the, all, or excuse me, I didn't think that all of the uh, people that were part of the mixed multitude were necessarily slaves. I thought they were Egyptians that came with the slaves. You, you know, the identity of the mixed multitude were never really established. 
we, it, they could have been Egyptians. They could have been people from other countries living in Egypt. We don't know. Well, that's why they kept, you know, it was better off in Egypt. You know? <laughs> there's, a, there's a hand in the back. If you could take the mic back there. Thank you. Yes. We'll get you, brother. In the sanctuary service, every aspect of the sanctuary was directed by God. The color, the material used, whether you used gold or silver, every aspect. And so man didn't have no uh, added, motion didn't have no added thing that he added to that. He only followed the instruction God given to him. And so I think we, in our today, as we live today, you know, every aspect of our lives should be under control of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As God give us direction, we go not on our own direction. We're not our own. So it, most of the left said, let me put a curtain here, I'll put the basin there, or I'll put the altar yeah. in this place. Every aspect has to be direct to follow the instruction that God gave us. That's right. In our lives today, we must do the same thing. That's right. You know, whatsoever you wear, whatsoever you eat, whatsoever you drink, do it all to, to the, the glory. glory of God. Yes. Whatsoever you wear, it's not like I can wear what I want to wear. No, you can't. <laughs> if you're under control of the Holy Spirit and God is leading you, wherever you go, he must lead you. So, you know, the path that God leads us, he, and that must be, you know, we say, well, God, where should I go today? Where should I walk today? And if you're not walking where God wants you to walk, you're out of control. So he's not in the direction of the Holy Spirit. Well, you brought up a good point, brother. You brought up a very good point because, you know, today's society seems to be really prevalent in lift up choices. You know, we have a lot of choices. Amen. And, 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 but, you know, as you point out, we should make the right choices. I want to point out something else, too. When Moses told the children to bring, they brought of all they had, and they brought of that great substance that they came out with. And, and check this out in, in Exodus 35, I'm sorry, 36, beginning at verse 3, and here's what it says. And they received of Moses all of the offering which the children of Israel had bought, brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it with all. And they brought yet unto him free offerings when? Every morning. Every morning. Right. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which they made. And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord had commanded them to make. And Moses gave a commandment, Throw the campaign, let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary, so that the people were restrained from bringing. For the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it, and it was too much. It was too much. Amen. Amen. The Lord Moses proclaimed, and he said, here's what we need, and the folks bring it. I don't know if you look at the the bulletin today, but I think for the first time in a long time, it says the amount we need every year and the amount we receive to date, we've exceeded that. Amen. 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 When, when there's, the word goes out that there's a need, it's good when the people give. Now, the sanctuary took about a year to build. And finally, finally, the Lord came down with a cloud and hovered over the sanctuary. And even Moses himself could not go into the sanctuary. So what was the Lord doing at that time? <laughs> Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. We'll get you. What did you say? Uh, that he was homeless. <laughs> he wasn't homeless. He wasn't homeless. So what was the Lord doing that they could not enter? the sanctuary. What were the people doing while they were waiting to hear from the Lord? Patriots and prophets. Page
I'm sorry, wrong one. Give me a second. I'll get back to that. Sorry. Let's look at the Sabbath school lesson. Sunday's lesson. The text says from 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. It says, knowing, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver and gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with the precious blood as of a lamb, unblemished, and spotless, the blood of Christ. Spirit of Prophecy tells us that angels, when they learn that mankind wanted to come and atone for us, why couldn't they? Why couldn't ten angels come down and say, I would die for Brother Ben, or I would die for Sister Bob? Oh, I would die for a thousand for Fran. Why wasn't that adequate? Why wasn't that enough? Hold on, hold on. I need to get you a mic. Over here. They were created beings also. They were, okay. not, uh, they were not the creator. So... So a created being couldn't come down and atone for I and I? <laughs> Brother? You know, it's not so much I have a problem understanding why the angels couldn't die, uh -huh. but why is it that Christ had to die? And the question also comes up in my mind, why does there have to be the shedding of blood? Yeah, yeah. God never used blood to create us. He only spoke it into existence. Yeah. Any thoughts on that? Wait, wait, wait. We got to get you in mic. Remember, there are people listening and they won't hear. Yes, because the blood is life. That's why when he created us, um, the, the blood that we have that flowing into our body is our very life that God given to us as a gift. I, I, think, I think what the brother's asking is, but why blood? Okay. Uh, Jeanette. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I've often asked myself, why, why did um, God send his son to die for us? And I have children, so I understand mm -hmm. as a parent that everything you have in you is to protect your child, and you, you would do anything to make sure that child is safe, and this is the only way that we could understand how much God loves us, because he gave his only begotten son to die for us and so as parents once we become parents we can really understand that sacrifice that God made Amen when you go back and you look and it's tough when you're a parent you go back did you have a comment we'll get, we'll get you Was it Mario? Yes. Well, when sin happened, there had to be a, an atonement. There had to be a sacrifice. Somebody had to pay. Okay, so the question is, um, God knows everything, correct? So he knew there would be sin, correct? Okay, so God wasn't going on a, hey, 
Here's something that happened, and we didn't know this was going to happen, so we got to put a system in place. This is already in place. This right. system. Can sin, you know, atone for sin? You know. Can sin atone higher. for sin? Huh? Can sin atone for yeah, sin? Can, is can, it? Yeah, can sin pay for sin, you know? There has to be an atonement. There has to be a higher level of uh, atonement, of uh, sacrifice. Yeah. Then, you know. Okay, Edna, thank you. Thank you, brother. Edna has a comment. I was just going to say that sin must be really horrible because it had to be the blood of Jesus to not angels that could, you know, take it away. Yeah. So just talking about the nature of sin must be very, very horrible. <laughs> we, we need you on mic. The, people. the interesting thing, too, is that we don't have the sacrificial system anymore. Right. So where does forgiveness come from? Blood? Or where does it come from? Now you have to ask yourself a question. Of course, blood itself, as it was designed by God, blood actually purifies our bodies. And it also brings life to our bodies. Yes. But that doesn't mean other creations have blood. So you have to ask yourself the question, what is the blood for? Why? Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I think the difference between the angels and Christ uh -huh. making the atonement for us was that the angels were created just like us. I yeah. mean, they're different in order, but they're, they were created where God's son wasn't. God, he always was. And so there was the only person who could make an atonement for the whole world, the beings that were going to come for 6,000 years into this thing, would have been the blood of Christ. Amen. Thank you. And, and keep in mind that we're talking about symbolic, symbols. When, when the priest put his hand upon that that goat or that animal and killed it, were your sins really washed away? No. no. So it was symbolic. When Jesus died on the cross, right? Um, if you didn't accept him, then what? Then does the blood really has any, any uh, saving power for you if you don't accept it? So I think a lot of these things are symbols to guide us to a system so we could understand. Amen. I think the killing of the lamb was to demonstrate and show them exactly how terrible sin was. You know, I don't, I, some of you were here last night to hear the presentation. And I'll tell you, as I was driving home last night, I was really struggling with, if I lived in that time, could I have taken an animal and kill it? And I really don't know if I could. You know? It, taking a life of something that had nothing to do with your, what you did during that day. You know? It's a, it's a symbol of the innocence and the guilty. Yes. You know? Christ did nothing. But yet, he paid the price. And, and if you go back and look at the spirit of prophecy, it said, the father did not give up his son without a fight. Amen. Did not. He didn't want to do it. You know? And he looked at several different ways. And the only way it kept coming back to, Jesus was the only way. Jesus was the only way. I think if we rewind from the beginning, uh, when God created the world, he created the heaven first, and he created the angel. His name is Lucifer, right? And he in charge of the angels. So what happened is the envy and the jealous of that Lucifer trying to be like God, the one who created him. And that's the beginning of sin. I think, in, on my perspective. Okay. So God sent him 
after he create the him who yeah, Lucifer here because he cannot be staying in heaven anymore because of what he did. Okay. Okay. And now he deceived. Uh, he after he create the the the, the world. And God, um, after God created the world, I mean to say, he, he make it so perfect. Nothing. It's nothing. Blemish, nothing. It's so perfect. Yes. Weather, everything is so perfect. Yes. And then he found, he found that, uh, the, that, uh, that uh, when he make, this is only my uh, conclusion about we're, these things. We're listening. Yeah. So when he sent Lucifer here, he started deceiving the two that God created, which is Adam and Eve. Right? Okay. That's the beginning of sin. I oh. think that's what's the okay. beginning of sin. Okay. When Lucifer um, um, uh, deceived Eva. No, before then. Before then. Before then. The, the war in yes. heaven. Yes, yes. That's the beginning of sin. Listen, I'll tell you, go back and read. And rewind. Um, there's several books, early writings. Uh -huh. Or the truth about angels, is, um, patriots and prophets, a lot of books that explain that. And, and that's why they call it a mystery, because, you know, we really don't understand all the components of it. But as humans, here's what we know. We know that Satan was the number one angel. In fact, he was called Lucifer, which means... Light bearer. So God the Father would give him the light, the truth, and he would interpret it to the other angels, and it would so forth travel and go through the universe. And then the question came up is, why isn't this truth originating with me? Why am I getting it from somewhere else, and am I not good enough to create and disperse this truth? So these questions start coming up as to why he wasn't number one. Okay. You see? And then he started to go to the other angels and give them these thoughts mm -hmm. about God's right. law. And, 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 and it started to spread from there. He had many, many opportunities to go back and be where he was originally. And he chose. He chose. Sister White says, there came a time when all of heaven was brought before the Father and the Son and demonstrate why only the Son, because he was begotten of the Father. It was illustrated why he was the one. Yeah. Okay, we have two, Paul and then the brother in the back. You know, the interesting thing is with the sanctuary, we're told in the Spirit of Prophecy that it's one of three things that we need to know. Okay. Period. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about the sanctuary is that it overlaps in so many areas. Yes. It, it completely overlaps every phase. Yeah. The interesting thing is you've got to stop and think about something that God himself had to give himself and none of the angels because there's only one person that's holy. Yes. And that's God, yeah. the Father, the Son. Now, Revelation tells us in 21, 22, I think it is, where it says that there is no temple in heaven. And what is the reason for that? There's no temple in heaven because the temple is God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And guess what? There is nobody found in the temple unless they're written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yes. Who, yeah. Where does our name go when we accept Christ? Yes. It goes into the Lamb's the Book. book of, yeah. Guess what? Who is in heaven in the New Jerusalem? We are the temple. You see, there's so much that we don't understand. Yes. Why is the blood so important? Because it came from holiness. Yeah. What are we going to be when we get to heaven? Holy. We're going to be holy. Yeah. The angels were not holy. I mean, they are holy. They're, yeah, but, but they're not holy yeah. in the sense that the blood was shed for them. Yes. There's a lot of deep issues here. <laughs> deep yeah. issues. Yeah. And, and remember I said at the beginning that, you know, when, we st when you start talking about a subject, your mind just expands. Brother. It said that. Uh, in the Sunday's lesson, it says, uh, knowing that he was not redeemed with perishable thing like silver or gold. Yes. You know, what is happening, we have realized that the, all the false religions had silver and gold. That's how you did that. That's <laughs> why God didn't make the point that you're not redeemed like they are. You are unique. You are different. Yes. But even today's society, there are groups who still play 
believe that you could pay penance for your sins. You know, if you come to <laughs> sin, you pay this, you're free from your sin. So there are a, a large individuals today on the face of earth who still believe yeah. that they can redeem their sins by paying silver or gold or paying a price for it. You remember the false religions thrive on money because yeah. that's why the priest had false religion in the first place. That's right. He lived that. But also we must remember that's why Jesus Christ was crucified. The Jews, wrote, the rulers and leaders wanted money. It was money the reason. It's the love of money. They, they love money more. They, they, they Judah carried that procedure out. They had a racket going when he took out of the temple. So that's why he got, hey, they tolerate him long they, that he didn't have a large followers, but when the followers got large, they said, hey, we've got to stop this. And that's why they crucified him. Thank you. Let's look at uh, Monday's lesson real quick. It says, sin and mercy. What's another word for mercy? Grace. So it talks about three different types of sin here. What were they? In the Three different types. Uh, there was a unknown sin. Uh, okay, unintentional. Rebelli- rebellious sin. Okay, that was the last one. And what when you do something on purpose? What do you call that? Intentional, right? So you have you have three different types of sin. Now. Of those, which one do you think is the worst? Huh? <laughs> which one? What's the difference between rebellion and intent? Wait, wait, wait. Let's get you a mic. We're running out of time here. Intentionally, you, you take your time to uh, figure it out and plan it. Okay. What's re- rebellion? Give me an example of rebellion. Does the name Absalom sound familiar? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brother, go ahead and say what you can. I'm just saying in the lesson it says rebellion sin, rebellious sin was done in the face of God. Yeah. The man who picked up the sticks on the Sabbath, he knew what the commandment was, but he's like, I'm going to do it anyways. Yeah. Uh, how about the, the man who was the ark, you know, carrying the ark, and it started to fall and he grabbed it? Uh, you know, people would say, well, that's harsh, especially since the, the Philistine had the ark and they carried it any kind of how. But the difference was Israel knew Amen. how they were supposed to. Uh, man, sorry, we're out of time. Look, um, here's what we'll do. Let's do it a little different. Let's look at next week's lesson real fast. Okay, turn, and it said it's the Day of Atonement. So if you're going to be here next week, I want you to pick a day and just present the highlights of that day. We'll cover it, but if I could have someone pick Sunday. Don't let me start picking names now. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. David has Sunday. So the way that's going to work, if you're not here, I'll pick another David. (laughs) Okay, Monday. Monday. Who wants to do Monday? You don't have to do the whole lesson, just the highlights for Monday. Okay, the the other David. (laughs) Okay, Uh, Tuesday. Who's going to do Tuesday? Vern, you want to do it Thursday for me? <laughs> well, this will be a good one to remember to do it. Vern, okay. Uh, Wednesday. Paul, you going to be here? No. Okay. <laughs> Jose, you want to do uh, Wednesday for me? Okay. Jose, Wednesday. Beth? Edna, you want to do Thursday for me? Balance it out. I have a bunch of guys. Okay. Edna, Friday. That's all right. I'll take Friday. 
All right. Who has the mic? Certainly. Let's bow. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for every opportunity to come before you. Lord, this is your holy Sabbath day. We need your rest. We need your presence. We need your guidance and direction in all that we do. And Father, what we want most of all is for your Holy Spirit to dwell within us, fill us full. Help us to be a light, to shine to others, to draw them to you, the true you, not the misrepresentation that Satan has put forth. Father, please, be with all those on our prayer list. You know their hearts. You know their minds. Only your Holy Spirit can truly draw people to you. Father, your protection, your guidance, your direction, and your love will sustain us until you come. May you be over all that we do and all that we say. In the blessed name of our Redeemer, our elder brother, our friend, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Yes.